a customer sent us an LG Y sustain and unfortunately they did not give us any information about the symptoms or the problem they're experiencing. So before we plug it into the TV, we're gonna do some component checks with the multimeter and see if there are any shorts. Looking at the backside, we commonly see problems with these guys over here. So we're gonna start with those first. And in beep mode, so whenever I have my leads touch indicating a short, we get a beep. The top row, we don't get a beep. However, something I want to show you, and this is why we have the microscope, some of these actually got really damaged and they're no longer making contact with the board. So if you can see here, you can tell that the legs are soldered in, but somehow they just got completely burnt up and the metal just either melted or burnt up or something happened, but um, I, it's possible maybe the customer ended up cutting the legs. I don't know exactly. Um, we didn't get any information from the customer on this, um, but all of these legs are not making contact with the board. So we're gonna go ahead and replace all of them, even though only the bottom row seems to be shorted. And then looking over on this side, this transistor here, which we can tell has a fairly cracked joint, is also shorted. And finally, we have diode D603 that we found as shorted. So we'll go ahead and replace all of those components, get rid of all the shorts, and then we'll come back and do some reflows on the cracks that we found across the board. So we'll go ahead and start with removing the ones that are surface mounted. And one thing I do want to point out is out of all eight of them, uh, six are transistors and two are diodes. So we gotta have to make sure we keep track of that. All right, now that the transistors and diodes are removed, we'll do another check in beep mode and see if we get shorts still. And we do, which I was not expecting. So let's go ahead and try and find out why. All right, I think that the reason we still have a short is because if we follow this trace here and we go up to here, here, keep going, keep going, over here to this jumper, over here, then down to this jumper, over here, to this jumper over here, and then follow this trace across diode D603, which as we found out earlier is shorted, and then keep coming over here, over here, down to this jumper over here, we come to this component, which is one of the other transistors, the through hole we had found was also shorted. So let's go ahead and remove that out of circuit and then we'll come back and see if the short is still present. And we'll also remove the D603 diode as well. So you typically want to make sure you screw the transistor in first before you solder it in. Otherwise, if you don't have it perfectly lined up and you solder it in first, then you'll be in trouble and you'll have to undo the work and redo it. Okay, so we have that transistor. We'll go ahead and replace this diode here. This is my replacement diode that I grabbed from a donor board. And I'm just gonna need to give it a quick clean so that I can know what the orientation is. So the negative is going to be over here on this side indicated by that black bar. And we also have one over here on the diode. So this is gonna be our orientation. Now that we have replaced the shorted components, Let's check again and see if our shorts are still present. The diode is no longer shorted. The transistor 
Perfect, also no longer shorted. And cross our fingers, yes. Okay, the short is gone. I forgot to remove some of the old solder. So we'll do that first. I'm also gonna have to remove the broken off legs of each component. Because again, I, I don't know if the customer did this. Um, they are a TV shop and they're usually pretty good with giving us information about tampering but they did not mention anything. We're gonna be placing our transistors on the board. We have six transistors and two diodes. So the only thing with these boards is they, the uh, pad has a big heat sink on it, so it is difficult to work with it. It requires a lot of heat. So if you're working on one of these boards at home, just be patient with it. If you have a hot air station, you can definitely use it to, to help out as well if your soldering iron isn't quite doing the job. All right, that completes, I believe, all of our shorts. We don't have any more shorts on the board. Of course, we'll want to do one last check now that the parts are installed again. So again, in beep mode, nothing, no beep. Perfect. Before we go ahead and actually live test in the TV, there are a lot of cracked solder joints throughout on some of the transistors. So let's take a look here. Looking at some of the through holes, we can clearly tell we have what looks to be the beginnings of a cracked joint. If I push the leg around, it's not actually moving, which means that it's not technically cracked yet, but if I don't reflow that, it will probably cause some sort of failure in the near future. And I guess that's what the difference is between a just a simple repair and refurbishing a board. A repair, you only fix what's currently broken, refurbishing, you do the repairs and also preventative repairs to ensure that there are no issues in the future. Which is what we try to do with every board we work on. And some of these joints, I don't think I actually need to add solder. Like this one over here, for example, doesn't have any cracks. It has an, uh, kind of a crown inside of the joint which I don't know why they don't that, do that for all the joints because that does actually help prevent cracking. You'll notice over here, our heat sinks are starting to have cracked joints. So we'll go ahead and re-solder those as well. I just finished reflowing the rest of the board. So now we're ready to do some live testing in the TV. So let's go ahead and do that. I've just installed the Y sustain in our test TV and I don't have a main board, so we're gonna do the color pattern test instead. So let's plug it in and see what we get. And it looks like it turned on. We have our white screen. So it'll go black screen and then I think red or blue. Okay, yep. So it looks like it's turning on. I do see a little bit of discoloration, but that's actually normal. This TV does have burn in, which is why we're using as our test set. But that means uh, we did a, a proper repair and we have a working Y sustain. So we'll just let it sit here for an hour or so, run it for a little longer, um, but we're all set. We got another successful repair. If you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.